So I kind of have a tradition. For every World Cup, I like to collect a soccer ball from that year's tournament. However, the issue you can see here is that they get dirty because they're balls that I actually go out in the field and use. Just have a look back from this photo from 2018, and you can see how dirty the ball from 2010 was just eight years later. And since I collect pucks and baseballs from different stadiums that I've been to, I really wanted to collect a soccer ball from every World Cup to have in a collection. However, full-size soccer balls really aren't that viable, so I came up with another solution. Mini balls. And these size 1 soccer balls are released for every World Cup, and they're pretty well readily available. However, there is a little bit of issue trying to get past ones, as the previous tournament's World Cup mini ball sells new for $100. So I told myself moving forward every World Cup, I'd buy two mini balls. One that I'd keep for display, and another one that I'd keep in a box to someday resell, and hopefully make a little bit of money on. In the meantime, try to collect some of the old World Cup balls throughout the history of the tournament. However, some of the prices for the older ones are pretty exorbitant, but I was able to grab one on a good steal. The 2014 Brazooka Ball. And my plan was to periodically add to this collection as things became available, maybe at good prices, but with the way that collections go, as the years continue, the prices only go up. However, that was until Adidas recently released a packet of all the World Cup balls that they released, starting from 1970 all the way up to 2022. It was a little pricey, however, when you compare it in price, the balls were just $16 per ball. I'll let you do the math on all 14 balls to figure out how much I actually spent on it. Shh, don't tell. But compared to the price that I get for these balls individually, I thought this is a pretty good deal and something I'm gonna hold on to for a long time. So, let's get it open. I need to rearrange myself. All right, well, uh, most of the box is empty. That's kind of annoying. Could have done a lot better job packaging this, but that's okay. So this wide box, and it's about third the size of the box. Check here. All right. So it comes with this special edition collector's box. It has the kind of design on it as the newest ball from the 2022 World Cup. But the outside of it has all the balls in Adidas history since 1970. Alright, let's sit back down and get this puppy open. I want to be careful opening this box, not to rip it at all. I'm struggling here. Let me turn around for the grand reveal. For the first eight World Cups from 1930 to 1966, the balls were all provided from companies in the countries that hosted that World Cup. And up until that time, they were all kind of the classic style of football that looked like a volleyball. But that all changed in 1970, when Adidas got contracted to make the World Cup ball. And they've done so ever since. Something interesting to notice about these mini balls is that from 1970 to 1994, they kind of have a foam exterior to them. Then 1998 on, the exterior is this rubbery plastic material. These earlier balls kind of feel a little cheaper and are a tad bit squishy. Meanwhile, the newer ones are what you'd expect out of a mini ball and seem very close to the replica of what the balls actually are today. And I realized by taking them out of the bag and opening the box, it really devalues the collection as a whole, but I'm more into showcasing my collections rather than just purely preserving them. The 1970 World Cup took place in Mexico, with the final being hosted in Mexico City, with Brazil coming out victorious over Italy for their third World Cup title. This is when Adidas introduced the Telstar to the world, as it has a black and white 32 panel iconic design. If you ask any kid to draw a soccer ball, I guarantee you they're going to draw a white circle with black patches all over it. As this original design incorporated gold lettering, this Telstar design really marked the start of Adidas making the World Cup ball, and a transition away from the classic footballs that looked like volleyballs. The 1974 World Cup took place in West Germany, as West Germany actually turned out to be the champions of the tournament with a 2-1 win over the Netherlands. 
Having Dutch roots, I am a huge fan of this 1974 squad, as they were really the inventors of total football, captained by Johan Cruyff, as they came up with a whole new tactic of how to approach the game. But the ball for the tournament was essentially the same thing as the 1970 ball, but this time had black lettering instead of the gold letter. The 1978 World Cup was hosted by Argentina and won by Argentina once again over the Netherlands. See a little bit of a trend here two years in a row where the host country wins over the Netherlands. But this is when Adidas came out with the Tango Ball, which would also be used for the next five consecutive World Cups. The ball consists of 20 identical hexagon panels, and the black design on it creates 12 circles. And under where it says Tango, it does say River Plate, which is where the final was played at River Plate's home stadium in Buenos Aires. The 1982 World Cup was hosted by Spain, with Italy coming out victorious over West Germany in the final. And Adidas basically did a copy and paste from 78 to 82 with now the Tango Espana, with the changes of the ball being the Adidas logo now changed to the flower design and the words Espana replacing River Plate. The 1986 World Cup was hosted in Mexico with once again Stadio Azteca in Mexico City being the host venue for the final, as Argentina defeated West Germany. The Azteca ball is the first time we see some variation to the Tango design. And it was the first fully synthetic ball at the World Cup. But now in the black portion of the ball, we see some different designs that are meant to emulate the art style of the native Aztec people. The 1990 World Cup was hosted by Italy, as once again the final was between West Germany and Argentina. But this time Germany came out victorious for their third World Cup title, with the final being played in Rome. The Etrusco Unico was the ball of the World Cup and had the same tango design. The balls decorated with three Etruscan lion heads decorating each of the tango triads, which pays homage to Italy's ancient art history. The 1994 World Cup was hosted by the United States with the final in Pasadena, where Brazil came out victorious over Italy. The Questra Ball was released for the tournament, named after the Quest for the Stars, and marked the 25th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission, which was the first moon landing back in 1969. So it definitely pivots away from the last two balls where they highlighted some ancient art in Mexico and Italy, but instead focused on the accomplishments of the United States as a country with the space race that persisted through the Cold War era. The 1998 World Cup was hosted by France and won by France with the final taking place in Saint Denis over Brazil, with a very infamous headbutt of course. The Tricolaire was the ball introduced for the tournament and was the last rendition of that tango style that we'll see. But it was also the first in a wave of introducing some of the national colors into the ball, as it boasts the colors of the French flag. As the triads of the ball also highlight some rooster feathers, being the national symbol of France with it appearing on their badge. The 2002 World Cup was hosted by Korea and Japan. It was the first World Cup to be held in Asia, and the first one to be held outside the Americas or Europe. It was also the first tournament to have a joint host of more than one nation. Brazil defeated Germany for their fifth title in Yokohama, Japan, as Adidas massively departed from the tango style and went to the Fever Nova. It's definitely the most unique of the World Cup balls, as the main cover of the ball isn't even white, as it's more of a goldish tint to it, as the ball contains these three kind of triangular pointed shapes on them, which took some inspiration from some elements of historic Asian culture. Germany hosted the 2006 World Cup, which saw Italy come out victorious over France in Berlin, as Adidas introduced their 12-panel design Team Geist Ball. To me, the panels of this ball have always looked like some women's hygiene products, but it was the first ball to have that World Cup's logo on it, and it was also the first time that a special ball was introduced for the World Cup final with a gold design. South Africa hosted the 2010 World Cup with the first World Cup in Africa, as Spain defeated the Netherlands in Johannesburg. Adidas introduced the infamous Jabulani for this tournament, as the ball featured only 8 panels down from the 14 of the previous World Cup. This is one of my favorite balls just because of how unique and infamous it is. The ball boasted 11 different colors that was symbolic of the 11 players on a football pitch, the 11 official languages of South Africa, and the 11 South African communities. And I'm a huge fan of how they implemented all 11 of those colors in the ball. And that's one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite balls, even though it was very infamous due to its unpredictable flight patterns. The 2014 World Cup in Brazil saw Germany victorious over Argentina in the final in Rio de Janeiro. Adidas introduced the Brazuca ball, which is an absolutely beautiful football, 
as it's made out of six panels that are kind of star-shaped and interlocked together. The colors on the ball come from the traditional wish bracelet that represents Brazil. The 2018 World Cup was hosted by Russia, won by France over Croatia in the final in Moscow. Adidas went back to a black and white design in this ball called the Telstar 18. And this is a ball that I actually used a lot and some of my friends would always call it the Minecraft ball because how the different squares and pixels on the balls are formed. And once again, the ball features six panels. And now the newest in the collection, the 2022 World Cup was hosted by Qatar and saw Argentina come out victorious over France. The Adidas Ahrila was the ball for the tournament, and instead of any national colors being used in the ball, the national colors were instead used in the finals ball. The ball was made with environmentally friendly sourced inks and adhesives. The blue, red, and yellow color scheme is meant to evoke the landscape of Qatar. 